This video is sponsored by Incogni. Protect your privacy today by taking your personal data off the market. Simply go to incogni.com slash company man and the first 100 people to use the code company man will get 60% off. The link is in the description. Wawa is quietly one of the most successful, well-liked businesses in the United States. If you don't know, they are a chain of convenience stores along the same lines as 7-Eleven, but with many key differences, including the fact that they are much smaller. Forbes has estimated their revenue to be around $15 billion a year, which I would say is incredibly impressive considering Wawa's stores can only be found in six states. They are all around the eastern part of the country. It originated in Pennsylvania, but can now be found in New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia, Maryland, and most recently, Florida. They've been making a big push into there over the past decade and have announced plans to soon expand their reach further west into Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. Wawa has been steadily approaching 1,000 locations and has expressed intentions to almost double that by the year 2030. That would be an aggressive expansion plan. See, as of right now, it's one of those stores that you either know very well or not at all. So for the people who are unfamiliar with Wawa, you may have one opening near you sometime soon. So I thought it would be cool if I I could be your introduction to them. Plus, it is an impressive story of a unique company with an overall positive reputation. Here, let me try to express how much people like Wawa. Despite their small size, they have been given attention from big time celebrities. Notably, Kate Winslet said it almost felt like a mythical place, and Johnny Knoxville has the logo of the chain prominently tattooed on his shoulder. In 2015, Market Force polled almost 7,000 customers in a study that resulted in Wawa being ranked as America's favorite convenience store chain. Clearly, there is a lot of hype surrounding this place, so I would sure like to try to explain where it all comes from by identifying what I believe to be some of the biggest reasons behind their success. Starting off with dairy, and even the biggest fans of Wawa may be confused about this one. They do sell milk and other dairy products in their stores, but it is not nearly as important to them as it used to be. The roots of Wawa technically go back over 200 years to the early 1800s. It existed as a manufacturing company that specialized and making iron fixtures, like lamp posts. Well, after about 100 years, now in the early 1900s, the business shifted when the owner of it, George Wood, got involved in dairy farming. He bought an existing farm, imported some high-quality cows from the UK, and built it up from there. Now, Wawa, that is quite the name, right? I almost feel silly saying it so much, but it was actually the area in Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia, where that original milk processing plant was located, and currently is the home of their headquarters. And to go a step further, if you're wondering why that region was called Wawa, it is a Native American word for the Canada goose that would be found there, which would very much explain why they've been using a goose in their logo for almost 50 years now. So George Wood established a dairy plant, and in the following years, it would deliver milk to people's homes around the Philadelphia area. It was high quality milk, but it was in a time before pasteurization, so as kind of a marketing strategy, he had doctors certify that his milk was clean and safe, and claims like that made people feel that they were less likely to get sick from it. It was a promising business until people stopped getting milk delivered to their homes. By the 1940s, most people had refrigerators, making milk deliveries less necessary, and by the 1960s, it was more commonly sold in grocery stores and supermarkets, so business was not looking good and something had to change. By that time, George Wood's grandson, Graham Wood Jr., was in charge of the company, and he decided to open the first Wawa store as a new means to sell their dairy products. So yeah, in the beginning with that first store, Wawa was special in the sale of things like milk and butter and ice cream. It was a big success too, allowing them to open a couple more stores by the end of the year and almost 80 of them by the end of the 1960s. It was the 1970s, however, when they started to develop their more familiar identity by expanding their product selection, leading me to the next reason behind their success, their products. All right, I'll admit, it is a very general reason, but Wawa is famous for the sale of multiple different products, so I figured I would group them together here as a single reason and talk a a little bit about the more popular ones. Private labels have been a big part of it. There is a Wawa brand that consists of hundreds of products that you could find all over the store. That's good for them because private labels tend to have high margins and build customer loyalty because you can find Ben and Jerry's anywhere, but you can't say the same for Wawa branded ice cream. You just have to keep coming back for it. That's how they started back in the 1960s, selling their own branded dairy products and have since expanded their selection considerably. Hoagies. It's the term used around Philadelphia when we're 
referring to a submarine sandwich, and probably the single thing that Wawa is most known for. They started selling pre-made ones in the 1970s, and by 1984, they expanded on that when they started selling them built to order. In 1992, Wawa secured 30,000 signatures in an effort to have the hoagie declared as the official sandwich of Philadelphia, officially starting Hoagie Day. They got a lot of press when they made a massive 500-foot-long hoagie for the occasion, and have continued to celebrate it with various promotions ever since. In 2015, they became the official hoagie sponsor of the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think this is really interesting. In 2018, Market Force conducted another survey of 11,000 people, this time with the intention of learning the country's favorite chain in each of five different food categories. Not surprisingly, the other four categories were won by large national chains, but in the sandwich category, it was Wawa. So clearly, millions of people have stopped at Wawa to buy a delicious hoagie. There is more that could be said about hoagies, but I have already said that word way more times than I have ever said it in my life before, so I think I should move on to another product they're known for, coffee. Now this is a big convenience store item, and Wawa is no exception. They started selling fresh coffee in 1975, again under the Wawa brand, and it has since become one of their staples. Selling their billionth cup of it in 2008, and today they sell around 200 million cups of it each year. Trust me, there are many people around the area that will say that they prefer the coffee at Wawa over the much more established, much pricier retailers like Starbucks or Dunkin'. One more product I'll mention is an obvious one, gasoline. Much like their other core products, they started selling it in the 1970s, cut back almost entirely in the following decade due to low profits, but by the 2000s, every new location they built included a gas station. Today, the majority of those 1,000 locations do include a gas station, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I would guess that most people familiar with the modern-day Wawa would most associate them with hoagies, coffee, and gas. I would say that shows how successful they've been over the past 50 plus years in expanding their offerings beyond those original dairy products. The next reason behind the success of Wawa, I'm going to call convenience. Obvious enough, right? It's a convenience store, but I would say that Wawa has really lived up to that name by going out of their way to make everything exceptionally quick and convenient to their customers. First off, they almost never close. Since 1972, most locations have been open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. The layout of the stores has been optimized for speed. They separate the sandwich area from the checkout counter so people could be served quicker. They separate the coffee from the cream and the sugar so people won't have to wait as long. Unlike most stores or restaurants, like Starbucks specifically, the entire Wawa system is meant to serve the customer and get them out of the store as quickly as possible. It leads to a higher turnover and happier customers who feel like they can save time by stopping there. They even used to have this 155 second rule, referring to the average time that a customer would spend in the store. To further add to the convenience and customer satisfaction, since the 1990s, Wawa has been working with PNC Bank to offer their customers surcharge-free ATMs that have been used quite a bit. In 2010, they celebrated their 1 billionth surcharge-free ATM transaction. Even more along the lines of convenience, in 2002, they added touchscreen ordering to all of their stores. Ever since then, you can conveniently order your hoagie using a touchscreen, which I realize doesn't sound very special today, but 2002 was still years before the launch of the iPhone or the iPad, so touchscreens were way less common and considered to be much more of a luxury. In 2015, they launched their app along with the Wawa Rewards program that provided their customers with a lot of information and allowed them to pay with their phone, making things even more convenient and further building loyalty to the brand. Simply put, Wawa has made it a priority to make the experience especially quick and easy for their customers, and that has made them stand out even among other convenience stores. The final reason that I have identified behind the success of Wawa would be the tight control that the owners and the leaders have maintained over the company, most of them over the years being members of the founding Wood family. If you have seen many videos on this channel, you would know that similar companies tend to expand through means of a public stock offering, providing them with money to do it, or franchising, making it less of an investment. But Wawa has yet to do any of this. They are a private company that owns all of their stores. In fact, according to Forbes, they are the country's 24th largest private company and the largest one from Pennsylvania. I find this to be impressive because doing these things would easily allow them to expand their reach beyond that portion of the country, but the store itself would likely be different because that would be giving up control. If you wanted to invest in Wawa stock, basically the only way you can do it is to work for Wawa. In the 1970s, as everything else was evolving, they started a profit-sharing plan with their employees. In 1992, they established an 
official stock ownership plan, and in 2003, they expanded it. Today, it includes over 20,000 employees, ranking it among the biggest in the country. The idea behind it is pride in ownership. Theoretically, Wawa employees will work harder at their job and care more whether the company succeeds or not if they have a financial stake in it. And that does seem to be the case. Wawa employees have a reputation of being friendly, keeping the stores clean, and overall providing a positive experience to the customers. Likely a big contributor to the fact that the average Wawa customer pays considerably more money each visit when compared to the industry average. Now, there have been lawsuits and other issues involving the program, so I'm not going to say it's been perfect, but many employees have gotten pretty rich from it. Over the past 20 years or so, their stock has become about 15 times more valuable. So, there you have it. That is what I believe to be four of the biggest reasons behind the success of the up-and-coming, uniquely named regional sensation convenience store, Wawa. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Wawa? If you are one of their loyal customers, what do you like most about them? What are the things that keep you coming back? Have I covered them in this video, or is there something else that I failed to mention? Or, if you are mostly new to the whole Wawa concept, which I imagine would be most of the people watching this, has this video piqued your interest? Does it make you want to visit one, or what do you think about all of it? If you do happen to visit one, be sure to come back to this video and let me know how it compared to your expectations after having watched this video. And any other thoughts you have about Wawa, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Incogni is today's sponsor because I think they provide an important service. You might not even realize this, but thousands of companies are out there collecting, aggregating, and trading your personal data. I don't feel comfortable with that. It means that if a big company has a data breach, your personal information can be included in that leaked data, even if you've never done business with them. And obviously, your data being out there can easily lead to spam emails and phone calls, and it's just a bad situation. Fortunately, you do have the right to request that these data brokers delete your information, and that is exactly what Incogni will do for you. For months now, they have been reaching out to them on my behalf and taking care of the whole process. I like how they provide a detailed view of all the requests they've sent out and even update me each week with an email. The one that I've received most recently says that I have 157 requests sent, 33 of which are still in progress, and 124 of them have been completed. To sign up, all you have to do is go to incogni.com slash companyman and the first 100 people to use the code companyman will get quite a deal, 60% off. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.